hello and welcome to another episode of Selfish with Nicola Clarity podcast and more importantly, the Women Who Birth series. I am so always excited to share with you this week's conversation. Now, buckle in because this woman is an absolute pocket rocket. She is the powerhouse behind Dancebox Powerhouse and Dancebox in real life. It, It's just, I just can't do it justice by saying she's a dance teacher and it's a dance class because it's really not. It's so much more than that. It is dance therapy, it is self-love, it is giving zero fucks and moving your ass like no one's watching and just shaking out any of the cobwebs and narky energy that isn't yours it's just amazing so but we talk about a little bit about dance box but we talk about her birthing process when it comes to bringing these routines this movement to the world she is magic and I think without further ado we should just crack on and listen to the conversation because it was such a hoot and she's just great and I'm so grateful so thank you everyone for listening in Thank you, Alana, for being an angel, and I really hope you enjoy it. Share with us what your thoughts are, what your takeaways are, and ah, in bloody joy. All right, cheeky babe. Hi, babe. Hi. We have... How are you? Oh, my God, I'm good. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. So, just the record, I have Miss Alana Gambrill from dance box with me and she has just finished uh probably just an hour or just a little bit more jamming with the powerhouse crew yeah I have indeed I'm still sweaty still sweaty and on a high <laughs> major high endorphins flowing and you were just saying to me right that when um like you brought back an oldie this week I have it's like therapy and there have been tears already and I'm like oh my god I didn't I didn't make it live I'm a bit nervous to go in there now and dive in later and be like no you know when I really step up the the preaching and talking so that teamed with the music that it is today oh just everything was out all the emotions were raw oh I'm chomping at the bit now as to what it was Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all right Herman's not back till like tonight so I could be like a heap on the floor and just release yeah do it I love that though and we're going to talk about what you do and and birthing and you know this is all about conversations about birthing things other than humans and how, how us women or those who identify as women who can really tap into that ability to create and produce and birth which I know is just I know from knowing you a teeny bit um, on a kind of personal level and the conversation we had we had a conversation on, a, on my podcast god like nearly a year ago yeah um, my lordy but also witnessing you in your power and just how important like that connectivity to our ability to create and be ourselves it's just I just know it oozes from you but let's kind of go there so from from your point of view at how you are how you have been in the world for in this lifetime the years yeah. you've been on earth like have you always had this like yearning to create and to birth and to produce yes yeah. one million percent in fact if you want to take it back to like, I, I think I was like four years old and I got sent to the headmaster's office in primary school because um, there was a few friends of mine that were like a little bit smaller than me in school. Yeah. And I used to mother them and try and um, teach them and create them the way I do now as a four year old woman. It's weird. I, I went, I got sent to the headmaster's office because I was always trying to like nurture and pick them up and say do this with me and do that with me and they complained and they were like she's too much please <laughs> <just> too loving. <laughs> so I'm in the headmaster's office and the headmaster's going can you stop trying to just empower everyone is that right oh I had this conversation the other day I was like oh my god I remember that 
That's so interesting, right? So like when we're in our youngest form, like in our younger years, we're at our purest, right? We are Mm. born exactly how, you know, our soul is at its its highest, exactly with everything that we, we have everything that we need in us already, but that you had, you know, and, and when it comes to like conditioning and society and culture and upbringing and all these things that kind of can take us away a little bit away from who we are mm. it's so interesting like knowing you now and like hearing that story that this is something that is inherently in you like this this innate desire and burning need to raise people up yeah it's it's crazy like no one at school called me Alana everyone called me mum <laughs> <It's> true <laughs> Were you just there, like ready, you know, like in the playground, if someone fell over, would you be like, oh, I'd be rushing over, I'd be like, I can make it better. I promise you, I can make it better. Let me just pick you up. Let me do this. And then, and then we, I used to say, let's go to the hill and dance it off. It's weird. It's weird. That's such a young age. So that's just been in you at such a young age. Let's go to the hill and dance it off. I did. We used to have this like, healed marsh thing and we stand on top of it and you used to feel like you were like the king of the world and I'd be like let's go up there and dance and no one will remember the cut on your knee oh that is so gorgeous I know and I mean, you haven't lost that do you do that oh. now like if say for example like your best mate or you know someone that you you, you love and I mean I know you, you have such a huge heart and a lot of space in there for so many humans but like is that do you feel that you kind of go to that and that place of like dance and movement and and getting somebody outside of them sit like yeah to kind of step outside of whatever's going on like do you yeah. do that now yeah yeah and and I've, a lot of my I've got two very close friends and they always say to me Alana stop trying to save every situation and every mm. person with what heals you like sometimes they just don't need to be saved right now like just shum yeah. but I I it just I can't help it and I just and I just believe that if you just take yourself out of the situation just for a minute it feels so much lighter and easier I just want to make people feel that yeah and to see that and so for you yourself when you're in those when you if you're in a bit of a funk yourself is dance your go-to are there any other like nuggets or practices or things that you that help you get yourself out of a funk yeah I think with me because dance is I've turned it into my career and it's my job and because I do it for other people all the time when I do it for myself it's a completely different ball game Mm -hmm. so yes uh it depends where on the spec on the spectrum my funk is if it's like super low (laughs) I will literally just be horizontal and breathe Mm -hmm. but if I know that there's still a little bit of an energy in there that I can hype my own self up if I've got that energy still for myself after doing classes, then yeah, I'll go in my kitchen, I'll put on my bow speaker, which is very loud, and I will dance the way Phoebe d- runs from friends. <laughs> Can you right. please do like <laughs> literally? I want to see this. I want to see it. <laughs> that, is, that is amazing. That is amazing. But that I think you hit a really good point, though, what you were saying at the beginning, like where on the spectrum your funk is. So this is also, this is sometimes really hard, right? Because you can be in a funk that is literally you just being a bit of a dick to yourself around stuff. And it can be, you can shake yourself out of it. And then there are times when it's just like your energy is low. There's maybe stuff going on. Like there's there's so many there's so many elements to ha- where you're where in the spectrum you are and what is impacting you. So, do you find it hard? Like though, do you find it hard to step into that stillness and that nothingness and that kind of relaxation, or is that something that you that you really honour? Um, I never used to be able to do it. I think since before corona hit I never knew how to do it and I I actually shied away from it so if I did feel any sort of way no matter where on the spectrum it was I'd try and distract myself with whatever I could which meant I never felt anything I never fully could understand what I was going through to then heal it Mm. and then obviously when the when the pandemic hit and you were told okay you kind of can't do anything can't see anyone outside of your house so 
bitch, you better sit down and feel and heal. <laughs> and feel and heal. I beauty in it. Yeah. And now I journal everything. Well, even when I'm literally on the floor, I will write down everything I'm feeling to understand it, to then process it and eliminate it. Yeah. Is that one of your like top tools, journaling? Yes, one yeah. of my biggest. And I never used to do it. And everyone goes, why don't you just call it a diary? And I'm like, it's, di- it's a bit different. It's not, I don't really talk about that. Like, Today I did this. And mm-hmm. I'm, it's more just like, okay, right now in this moment, I'm feeling and my soul doesn't stop speaking. Yeah, yeah. You know? The ego's not there. Yeah. If there's yeah. an ego there, then you kind of stop yourself in your tracks, don't you, sometimes? Yeah, yeah. And the beauty of just free writing and that kind of, just letting any expectations go, not thinking about like your grammar and everything. Like, yeah, so, yeah. so powerful. That's yes. Juicy, juicy, juicy. I, I'm a real fan of journaling and I, I, yeah, I love it. And it, it is like sometimes, and I want to talk to you as well, like what I want to cover in these conversations as well is like the shadow, like the, 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 the darker side, because, you know, we can all be, high and full of life and light and all of that and I get quite fucked off to be honest <laughs> to be frank you're ghost <laughs> dropping the f-bomb <laughs> fair. I know you love it as well I do uh, on that note when 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 um it's like school holidays and Hunter is here and I'm dancing with you or like on the weekend he's like oh she swore again <laughs> I'm like she's my girl <laughs> love it. And you're gonna be like sweet up that's gonna come around another 27 yeah, times like, really, look, we've talked about this it happens when I dance <laughs> <laughs> but back to what I'm what I'm getting highly fucked up about is that in like you know in the spiritual world and personal development it's like oh love and light love and light but there is a shadow side and through the shadow and the darkness is the growth and what you talked mm-hmm. about like you know um at the start of Rona which is bloody distant memory now because we've been in it for such a long time um that it forced you to I love what you said like feel and heal and sometimes the outward portrayal is that a woman like you who is just so full of love so full of energy so empowering so so like on this planet to encourage anybody like you say that right everybody whatever you look like shapes up whatever man woman whatever you however you identify is welcome in your world and people see that and they think oh my god like you must always be like this like oh my god I want what she's having and we forget that there is this shadow and this darkness and we all have that and so when you are, you know, living, living your life and, and, you know, particularly like going through your journey with the business and, and, you know, your, your creativity with, and we'll talk more about this, about you, how you create your um, routines and dances and choreograph and all of that stuff. But like from a shadow point of view, like what have you learned so far? And, and yeah, tell us a bit about well, that. Um, are we talking just since the pandemic? No, like we can go, we can go back. We go like, way back. We got some okay, time. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, um, and some of my oldest clients will know this. I mean, they might not know it because they're, they're probably not too bothered. But I was always very um, be this person. Don't show your truth, as in show your truth, but as in like, okay, I'm feeling awful stay, some shit is going on personally. And through my um, training as a dancer, it's instilled in you to do this and you don't show anything and you leave your shit at the door. And I'm all for that because people come for a service and I'm there to lift them up and everything else. But what I have learned the most is to be a good leader. And I am a leader mm-hmm. of a community is to show vulnerability, is to show your truth is to show that you're struggling and you're working through something that is really freaking hard. Um, and there is so many highs with it and there's so many incredible lows. Mm. And if I didn't teach in my truth, then these people are always going to be like you said, what's she having? Oh, what this, her life must be perfect. Mm. And actually to just say and relinquish 
that need in me to look like everything's good is destroying, it's damaging, it's damaging. Especially when you do your job as, as much as I do in a week. There's been times where I turn on the live button and I, three minutes before, was in a puddle of mess on the floor thinking I can't do this anymore. Mm. And then I press live and it's like, bam. Or I say, guys, this is where I'm at today. I'm here to give you my everything, but maybe my everything isn't what you need, uh, or expect, sorry. And then it, that end up, ends up actually being one of the most beautiful classes because everyone goes oh shit like mm. we're all in this like we've all got this shit going on yeah and they so can hold you right like this is you a do. community it's like this is the collective and this is what you're creating but you also have that you have that for you as well that container exists and they do you as well yeah they're so kind it's very rare that that happens because i i you know, if I do have low days, I make it on a days that I don't really teach. But um, but sometimes you can't, you can't, you know, can't, like there can't. Is, you can't manage that. Your energy peaks and troughs, and yeah. and things happen, and life happens, and you know, we are but human, right? No matter what our soul is here to do, we're having a human experience where we we experience things differently, and Absolutely. yeah, yeah. And I remember um, when you you had a little like week break. And I remember the conversation, we had a conversation separately and you were like, oh, you about taking a holiday. It might have actually even been on the, po the podcast that we did. And, and I remember I said, I was like, but you deserve that. And no one is, no one is going to, you know, expect otherwise. And it was, a remember, a real shift for you to be like, oh, it's okay. No one expects me to turn up three times a week, every day, every week and perform and not have your own downtime and it's really important for you for anyone to recalibrate and recharge and, and rest and when you show that to the other it's also empowering and you know we can forget yeah. about that right like that is empowerment you're all about that but that is actually empowering and gives it is it's almost like the thing is I always preach about you don't need anyone's permission slip to do whatever you want and I wasn't practicing that because I was like shit I need to be this person for these people all the time. And I wasn't giving myself permission to just sit and breathe and replenish myself, my soul, my body, my spirit, whatever. Mm. And when I do stuff like that, they say, thank you, because you've given me the permission to say to my whoever I need to, but we don't need that permission slip. Like, that's another thing I've learned. You're, you control what, I know I'm, I'm my own boss. Mm. I'm my harshest boss. And I, and I think if you just take away the permission of others to do what you need, 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 like shit changes and you do, you empower other people to say, yeah. fuck it, I'm going to take, I'm going to take control of what I need right now. Yeah. Uh, even if it is, you know, sometimes I've taken a few days off. I did bank holiday and I did, took the Monday off because I needed to sit and work through some stuff because it was coming to the end of like yeah. the process of it all to just, and then come back stronger. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> I love that. <clears throat> and so with the work that you do, like, do you, is there, do you still have that kind of battle of like, I need, to, I have to show up for, my work and these people, um, like it's my responsibility or have you learned some boundaries or have you put some boundaries into place about, or do you have like, you know, some telltale, like almost like warning signs that you need to take a step back and give yourself space and time? Yeah, I think I, I think there will always be a part of me, no matter how I grow and change and evolve, that has that element of, I need, I need to be on, I yeah. need to be on, I need to do this. Cause it's, I'm, I'm good at my job and I want to give the best service I can, but it does come now with an element of Ilana, you just give them what you can. Mm -hmm. You turn up and you give them what you can. Whereas before I'd be like, no, I have to do it like this. And that's definitely, definitely gone. Yeah. Um, as long as I give them a service and, and, and we all make each other feel great by the end of it, it's, it's great. Do you know what I mean? I don't need to be, 
at 1,000 every no. <laughs> <laughs> And being on the receiving end, you do that. But we, you, like you say, we were our own harshest critic, right? So we we think we need to turn up in a certain way, but actually when we just turn up as a, ourselves, people get things from that anyway. Like, yeah. it's like, you don't need this kind of like, um, like pre, like even it, like prescription or something of like what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. Yes. And feel like if you don't do that, then you're not gonna give, like you, you will do that anyway. It's just natural to you. But when it comes to you like, creating mm. from a yeah from a G I mean we've had the last I haven't been on our uh, on live for a couple of weeks which I'm glad school holidays are over next week <laughs> um thank the lord please don't shut again school so that'd be great <laughs> um, but you, we've had some really juicy new um routines yeah. and like what is your process like how do you birth your new babies <laughs> Like what, it, what so, do you do? For me, I mean, cause I've, I've actually counted through cause I've been running dance, dance box for six years now. And I counted through all my routines and there's like 300 routines that oh I've God. created in six years. And it's mad. And when I first started, they were super, super basic because I didn't know, I hadn't had a foundation yet of mm. knowing you guys. Once I know the majority of the room, whether it be in the studio or online, I know you guys' ability now because you show me videos. I then would hear my, so the music, the music part of it is the biggest part. I will sit down and I will flick through endless albums and really? something goes, oof, yeah. And then something hits me and then I know I can, I know I can start something. And when I, are you, I have to, I actually had this discussion at the weekend. I have to be in a space where I know no one's in the house. Mm. I know no one is going to call my name or is waiting on me to finish or anything like that because I can't create like that. Yeah. Um, and then I will lock, even if the house is empty, I will lock whatever room I'm in. I'll shut the door because it makes me feel contained and I keep the creativity in the space. Mm. I can't, it's weird. Yeah. I blare the music over and over again until I find the first move. And I always start with the first part of the song. If I don't start the first part of the song, it takes me forever to create it. So I start the first part of the song. Once I've got the first two moves, it just flows. And it could take me, from that flowing, it could take me 20 minutes to complete it, or it can take me two hours. Wow. But I, and also I, I, even though it's my biggest passion, I often dread choreographing because I dread it not sitting right with me and it being a long process. But when I'm in it, I'm like, oh, this is freaking good. <laughs> and it feels so good. I, God, I always, when you do, I'm like, how do you remember everything you've just created if you've just birthed that? Like, it's just so, and I know you're a it's trained a muscle dancer, memory. It's a it's muscle like, memory. Yeah, yeah. And so like, Oh, I'd love to, st I'd love to be a fly on the wall to watch you like going through the tunes. So many swearing. Yeah. <laughs> Does any like mirrors and stuff get broken from, broken from you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I like strip all my clothes off, all the clothes get on my nerves. I strip it all off and I like end up being naked. There's sweat everywhere. The music is <laughs> going backwards and forwards. I'm like huffing and puffing. And then at the end of it, I'm like, oh, it's actually like giving birth. Yeah, but this is it, right? This is all part of the, this is the, this is, this is the juice. My intention with having these conversations is to show like this beautiful process of birthing outside of human. And this is not to disregard how fucking challenging it is to push a human. All births are ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, you know, that process and that, you know, like going through, if you think about, conceiving a, a human child like it's a process it's like you know you're good you might be trying a little bit and it's like when you're saying with the, with the music it's like it's got to like oh hit you and it might take a bit of time that's the orgasm <laughs> with the, oh yes you're like yes seven <laughs> more references to friends. Um, <laughs> yeah i love that you're like oh, this moment <laughs> oh but so how do you keep that how do you keep those orgasms alive like 
you know, re with you've made 300 or so, maybe even more. Like, you know, think about how many routines you've been in, like, but like that you have created your own. Like, how do you keep it fresh? Like, is it just, is it that creating that space, like you said, and allowing it to flow through you? Um, like what, is there any magic source or do you just allow it to, does it just kind of land? I kind of asked my body what would feel good in this point. And like, there's a lot, like, you know, cause you've been with me for a while now, once you've done my choreography, you kind of understand how I choreograph because there's a lot of similar aspects to it. But I always think like, how would my arm feel in that moment? And I just, I would, I would literally just try that arm there, then that arm there. And, and, it, and then until it, that move lands for me and I'm like, oh, that feels good. That will make them feel good because equally I'm, I'm not choreographing for myself. I'm choreographing for people who have never danced before. Yeah. So I have to make it challenging yet fucking awesome. And also retainable for you yeah. guys. Like a bit accessible. Like I can, it's like you, you on the receiving end, you're like, you don't look at it and go, fucking hell, I can't do that. Like, yeah. I never like, want you want to be challenged. Sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you also want to go, I could do that. Like, yeah, yeah. It. yeah. See, see I'm not going to give you a triple pirouette back then. <laughs> click, click, you know what I mean? Oh, please do it. It'd be well funny. The video well, would be great. amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's just, um, I ask my body, I ask my body where it feels good and what, what will feel good for other people. Yeah. And, and I think that's how it keeps it fresh. And the beat aids me. And the biggest thing of all is it's, it's my deep rooted gift. Yeah. my passion yeah. so how if you're that passionate about something you can't really go wrong yeah yeah and it needs to come out of you it's like I once heard this I can't remember was that a, I think it was at a training and then and I was at and they said like if you're keeping your gift to yourself you're basically you're stopping others from receiving that gift. And so who are you to say, oh, I'm not going to share this right. because someone might need it. And so I think that's just so, so in line with what you're saying. Like it has to come out of me and I have to give it to other people and, and for them to experience that. And so we know that you love dancing and you, you're a trained professional dancer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Me dancing. Me? We know she likes dancing, everybody. You've heard it here first. Mm -hmm. um, and you you trained and you're a professional dancer for many, many years. Yeah. What is the when you started Dance Box, what was the intention then? And what's the intention now? And what does it bring you from from, from a personal standpoint? Um yeah, like creatively energetically there's a few questions in there so I hope you <laughs> I'll try my best to remember um I okay so when I first started dance box the intention was to make everybody who doesn't get the opportunity to do something like this at the time I was a backing dancer in music videos and um, tours and sh shows and stuff. And the feeling I got, and I know it's because it's that's what I chose to do with my life, was immense. But I thought, why, why does Joe Blogs down the road or Joanna Blogs down the road not get to get this? Because you know, we all danced before we walked, like we all wiggled and we moved. It's like <laughs> in us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When well, you see babies and they're like, you put yeah. music on and they're like going for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just thought, I wonder if I could, I wonder if I could bring this to people that didn't ever get the opportunity to do this. And it, I started plugging it as like, um, come, tone up, lose weight. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Why? Because I thought that that's the mentality of other people and that's what would bring people in. And then once they were in, I'd be like, okay, actually guys, it's, it's fair, okay? <laughs> this is soul work, peeps. This is soul work. Oh, you, may have come soul in, work. <laughs> you may have come in the door thinking you were going to lose weight, but there's so much more. <laughs> yeah, so much more. And, and that is not even an aspect I even ever think about or talk about or anything like that. No, no, no. Um, and now um, I... I I'm, I, I was actually quite um, ashamed or not, not ashamed, but like I come from being at the top of my game in the dance industry and I left it 
And I didn't speak about what I did. I didn't even promote it. In fact, Dance Box was a private Instagram page that only clients could see. Oh. And then I thought, why am I doing this? This is the most beautiful work. Why am I feeling ashamed? It was just inside me from like my dance career and, and my peers that you're not cool unless you're doing like smashing it out in the dance industry. And then I opened it up and I made it, I made sure everyone knew what I was doing. And that's when the beauty happened because I was being honest and truthful in what I did. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about it and then I, and then I just, I just preached the way I do. And then it started growing really beautifully. That is just so, it gave me goosebumps, like you really, like coming out of that, not the closet, but like, you know, like stepping out, stepping out onto this, onto your stage in your trip yeah. and being like, this is how, this is how I, um, I roll. And I'm like unapologetic about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's such a tricky, like, you know, from the stories and I know sometimes it is stories but what we hear in the industry in industry industries like dance it's like it's so particular and you have to be a certain way and look a certain way and like hold yourself in a certain way and like you say like lose your emotion and just turn up and be like okay I'm on and like did you come up against any yeah controversy or like pushback from peers and things yeah of course of course in fact when I was at dance college I, I just said this um story today on powerhouse because I wanted to inspire them um when I was at dance college I I got in on a scholarship and the my director was an American old school dancer like from back in the day like you had to be this way and you had to speak this way and everything else and I came in as Ilana and they'd never really met <laughs> Ilana before they were very much up against you know tight buns and don't speak and don't eat and and then I came in and you're like should we go to the hill and dance it off yeah <laughs> and they they was like what is this whirlwind anyway you're welcome the director ended up saying to me look you have got something and I don't know I've never seen it before and you're fucking amazing but you will never ever ever work you will never be this you will never be that you this industry is not for you darling it took me um about a year to get over those words and I thought I'm not letting her fucking stupid words penetrate my soul because I know that I've been brought here to dance I don't know how I don't know why but I'm here to dance anyway I packed my bags that day and I said look fuck your scholarship you're not good for my mental health and I fucked off and then that's when I started my dance career because I told myself that I could and I flew I have no idea what you've asked me but I know that this <laughs> That is amazing. Wait, what did you? What I can't did, even remember what I asked you because I'm just fucking jaw dropped that, you know, if you're listening to I left and then audio, she you'd be like, oh my God, but I was actually like, oh my God, she did not say that. And yeah. this is what crushes people's souls. Like, soul. it's, it's like our dreams, our dreams and our needs and desires are in us for a fucking reason. And yeah. when somebody crushes that, oh my she, God. Um, I think it was a couple of years later. She saw me on a TV show dancing with quite a big artist. Yeah. She, I don't know if she saw it or she saw it on social media. Name or drop, name drop. <laughs> she couldn't, no, no. She <laughs> called me and she was like, Alana, I was wrong. And I was like, yes, yeah, she fucking was. And if I didn't listen to you, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And my, my story of telling Powerhouse is that there's so many people that put their fucking words on you, yeah. their beliefs on you, and it stops everything because you allow it to. I didn't allow it. And if I didn't, if I did allow it, there'd be no dance box. There'd be no powerhouse. There'd be no change. There'd be no, no There'd be none, maybe none of it. What did that, you ask me? I can't even remember now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen, any, any- It will come bit. back to me, it will come back to me. What did I ask you now? What did you ask? Oh, me? was it around what you controversy coming up at, from the industry? There's a bit of controversy. <laughs> There's a little bit slightly controversial being told that, but like, okay, so go back to old, you're great, you've got this amazingness about you, but you're never going to make it in the industry. Bitch comment. Yeah. Um, and you were like, 
not on my watch. Off we pop. Let's no, go. No, for a year, for a year. Okay. So how, what, what, what did you do? Did you, you stay, did you stay in the scholarship for a year? No, so I, I did, I did, it's a three year course and I did two years of it. Yeah. And it was on the second year that she said this. She actually called me in and said to me all of this stuff. And she also said, oh, look, I've made a call in Belgium and you're going to come with me to Belgium. And I was like, oh, what, like a dance job? Like, are we going to a new school? Like, what is it? She's like, I've called my plastic surgeon and we're going to get you liposuction because that's how you're going to win in this life. Stop. So that's when I picked up my bags and I said, go fuck yourself. I'm not going to say her name. I was about to say her name then. Um, and I literally left and I was on the floor for a year. But within that year, I also made myself my own timetable for every dance studio in London that I could attend. And I made it like Mondays. I want to do this class at Pineapple. Tuesdays, I want to do this. And I slowly, I went on my own. I went insular and I just kept myself training, kept myself dancing. And I went into a world that was not my stupid little college that was run by an old school dancer. Mm. It was a world full of eclectic, beautiful, open, liberal dancers. And I was like, her words are not gonna sit on me. And I did that for a year and I did it on my own. And I didn't, I didn't, I met a few amazing people and I ended up being in this, international dance company by the end of the year and boom I was okay again but wow. it's a while. that's huge I, I thought I literally jaw dropped at the first comment from her and then it was loads like that oh my so. gosh like I'm so grateful that you are who you are and that you carried on and was like no absolutely not more than once but yeah that that's also a lot to process and go through and I'd imagine like it would have been obviously it when you're younger and vulnerable and, and impressionable yeah. right and then you've got people around you who who have been in the industry and you know this is also what we get caught up around right oh that person knows more than me or that you, their perspective matters no. and it's like fuck like had you taken that on and carried that you could carry that for the rest of your life and not do what you're on this planet Absolutely. to do and you know like this woman was like oh honey sweetie I dance with like Debbie Reynolds my whole life and I'm this and I'm that I'm like okay sweetie well I'm Alana Gambrell and I'm gonna do this this and this <laughs> yeah who's Debbie Reynolds anyway <laughs> <laughs> Debbie who oh wow that's huge and you know like another example of like yeah like soldiering on and making it your own right I love that um do you have like any other little creative outlets that you that you go to like uh, uh, any other ways to release creative? yes I mean yeah they're not that creative but what um, is it actually let's back up the truck before you answer that what does what is being creative to you creative is um is using something within your within your like deep inside your soul yeah and bringing it out into form and that could be anything like I would I would pick up a t-shirt blaring my music in my room doing nothing got nothing to do and I'll just create a whole new top things like that and it's like it's it's me it's my personal soul coming out into this top or into this dance routine or uh I don't know oh I saw when you tie-dyed last year I love to tie-dye <laughs> I bleach everything up um Sometimes, it, like in the lockdown as well, I would have nothing to do of an evening and I would just sit and play with my face and all my makeup and like create weird, wonderful eye things. And yeah, like I, I, I like to see what I can, I'm not an artistic person, but I've always been great at makeup. And I, I just, yeah, that, those sort of things. But my outlets are working my body without anyone else looking at me. So I love to go to the gym where I'm I'm hyping myself up. I'm in my brain or I'm in my own thoughts and I'm not having to be like, go on, girl, you can do it. It's just me. It's just yeah. for me. I love that. Yeah, I love that. That's so juicy. Like mm. me first. Yeah. <laughs> Hells to the motherfucking yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so 
when like from your from a business perspective like I know everything has really shifted like six years ago you started dance box and it was in the studio like in real life bricks and mortar styley and now you have dance box powerhouse and it's online and you know I preach to everybody that you because it's so interesting right I think virtually like online we many people didn't think that they could get that connection and especially receive that energy that we do by a powerhouse but you do you can like it's so oh. yeah I know it's so interesting because you know like everything is energy and what goes on like you know we're having this conversation now and we're connected we're virtual we're on zoom but I can just it's like our energy is in this mix and so yeah. it's just like magic and obviously with dance and movement and it's not just dance right like it's like expression it's therapy it's like you know like you said today there were tears like there is it's releasing vulnerable it's vulnerability it's like you know seeing yourself for who you are there's so many like facets to it mm. but for you in your business like obviously there's been a lot of shifting but are you looking to to birth anything new <laughs> like, can we get an inside scoop? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm in the process of birthing something new at the minute, but it's like the earliest of earliest of earliest days. Like the sperm ain't even met the egg yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is grand. What's your process through when you're birthing something that isn't like a new routine and movement and dance, but is actually, is it just, yeah, is there a process or is it just like, again, flow through me? Right. When something's completely like this new project that's going on in my brain, when <laughs> something is in me that I have no idea about in terms of how to get it off the floor or anything like that, I do a fuck ton of research and research and research and research and interviews and interviews and interviews and interviews until my soul goes bam and then I'm like okay let's go and then I run and I sprint and I I sprint so much that I cannot breathe until it's done yeah that's how it goes I love it so where are you at now in that are you still in research phase interviewings interviewings okay juicy oh I'm so excited and I know that like, we've talked to a little bit, like obviously, you know, I, I well, you don't, you, yeah, I think, you know, I um, use human design and yeah. I know that you are a projector, which is such a trait, like the research, the learning, the needing. Oh, is so, it? Yeah, it's really like, that's a new saying. I was like, this is just so, one of my best friends is a projector and just, just so like, yeah, they're so like that. Whereas, you know, some people just go, oh, I've got an idea, I'm just gonna go put it out there. Yeah. And you know and there is no right and wrong like we all do things differently but I love that that you wait for that again that kind of sperm egg situation yes <laughs> yes more than that like the sperm the egg and they yeah I need that shit to land mm. and then grow and then birth I love that I love it I love it <laughs> and so specifically for since having your your business and dance box more online. I know you've been went back into. When are you back in the studio now? Oh, or... Legally, we can go back in this month, but at social distance, and I'm a bit like, <laughs> if I'm going to go back, I want to go back. Boom. Yeah. So soon, I'm allowed to go back. Boom. Okay. So I'm still thinking about it, and it's May, but whatever. Yeah. 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 So, but the, obviously, the, your focus has been. Um, your focus has been predominantly for the last well over a year with delivering your magic online like how what's been one of the biggest lessons for you and like what awareness have you developed on a personal level during that time during online during specifically like online the last kind of year what have I learned yeah. I've learned I can do anything I fucking put my mind to. I think you learned that when you said adios to old um, 
Jackie. Oh, I can still know. Yeah. Um I I I have. I've learned that I can I can do hard things and I can do and I can do them at a very, very good um level. Yeah. <laughs> um and I've I've learned that I can have the most amazing connections with people I've never ever met in my life. Who knew? Oh, no. Who knew? Who, Who knew? knew? It's so amazing, isn't it? I think that too. And I think like Powerhouse is such a pure example of that. I've got a few little communities that, especially in the last year, that have evolved. And, you know, the conversations that you can have with people that you've never met in the flesh, but you're like, I know. oh, God, you're just like, oh. They know everything <laughs> about me. I've never yeah. met them. Yeah, you're but like, we my definitely. references, everything. <laughs> We've definitely lived a life together before. I knew you were in a former life for sure. For yeah, sure. but that's so nice though, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's beautiful. Amazing. Okay, so I just want to thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here and for birthing what you birth. I thank me too. Oh my God. Saved my life, that's for sure. Yeah. And like anybody that's listening, if they feel that pull towards, Join in dance box, like fucking do it, mate. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Like it's gonna change your life for the better. Yeah, absolutely. And I so look forward to. I'm literally like, watch this space. What's gonna, what's gonna come? Oh Although, yeah. Like you're gonna be. You're still in your early stages. Concept stage, I say, maybe more so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Listen, my darling. Thank you so much for your time and for Thank sharing you. your stories with us. Um, and I'm so glad that what's her face got it wrong and that we have oh, you yes, doing, yeah. doing what you do. Oh, actually, I was going to ask you, and I remember I was going to ask you something. So I know you have such a beautiful, strong bond with your mum. Yeah. You have such a beautiful relationship. And um, how was that for her? Like seeing you in that, like God, geez. her having birthed you, like you know, seeing you living in your dreams and that, and like she just, she is just, you can just see it. She doesn't, she says it all the time. She doesn't need to though. She just, you can see her bursting with pride. She, well, sometimes when I'm on my lives, she'll be sitting on the couch just chilling, and you, I just, just smiling at her. you, just literally like. Cause she's seen everything. Like I started dancing properly, properly when I was 12 and she has seen every low and every painful moment and every high. And then she looks at me walking in my purpose and she's, she just, she's floored by it. She always goes, I can't believe you're mine. I can't believe I had you. <laughs> but I say, I can't believe, I can't believe the divine gave me you. Yeah, how just, gorgeous though. Yeah. So contracts. Soul contracts. Sal was up there having a chat going, yeah, I'm going to be your mum. Yeah. Do this. Yeah. yeah I'll, you. I'll have you. Man. I'll have you. Now you better dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so magical. Well, thank you so much, my darling. And um, I'll pop up links and all of the things to you and your magic. And look after yourself. My love. Take care, thank baby. You. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. How yummy was that? She is just wonderful. I really invite you, encourage you, I urge you a little bit to think about joining Powerhouse. It's so much fun. Dance is ugh, so powerful and you can really feel the energy regardless of being in the room with each other but in saying that I cannot wait to get my ass over there and be in the room together thank you thank you thank you Alana it's so interesting when I when I uh, talk to Alana I totally get way more London I feel like over the years 12 years living outside of the UK like my accents kind of neutralized a little bit but when I, if I have, a, if I'm a bit boozed or if I'm around uh, Londoners or Essex girls, <laughs> um, but like, you know, people from home, I end up kind of coming back into, um, 
into my London a little bit more and I really enjoy it. It was so nice. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Women Who Birth and this is brought to you by me, Nicola Cloherty. I do a good few things to help women reconnect, remember and reclaim who they are and one of the things that I want to share with you today is a beautiful self-study program that I have called The Selfish Project, Selfish Thinking. And it is all about understanding how your menstrual cycle works and how you can really support your your life, your the work that you do, the life that you have, movement, food, which is really important, may I say. <laughs> how you manage stress, work, creativity, creativity. I'll say that again, creativity. On that note, we are women. We have this beautiful ability to create and birth. There is a reason why I have called women who birth, women who birth, regardless whether you've birthed a human or not. And this for me was such a beautiful uh, implementation integration into my life when I started to really work with this particular rhythm and cycle to create I just I'm so blessed to understand and to to love and to honor and to create in accordance with my menstrual cycle and so if you feel like you want to learn more about that you can grab the course it's a It's a self-study course. It is available at any time and it is only 111 euro and it's lifetime access for as long as the course stays alive, shall we say, Um, but it's not going anywhere, anywhere, anytime soon. But it is designed to break down how your hormones work, how to live more in partnership with your cycle um what everything that's going on and different areas of your life and how you can really honor your biology and your body which is so important for us women because I really do believe and know through the clients that I work with as well and my own experience that we stepped away from that and hells ladies we are bringing it back so if you want to take a look you need to go to nicolacloherty.com forward, forward, forward splash, forward slash the selfish project, or just go to nicolacloherty.com and you'll find a button there. All right, lovelies, enjoy. Thank you so much. And I will be back next week with another beautiful guest to share with you how wonderful. Lots of love and take care. And thank you so much for listening. Oh, and if this or any of the other episodes are like, oh my God, I need to share this, do it. Help a fellow woman out. Or a man. They might need to learn a thing or two as well. Why not? Hey, why not? Okay, this is really me going. Lots of love and I will see you on the next episode.